Hey, what is up everyone? It is Rich. All right, welcome to Super Fun Saturday as we look at a Rags Morales piece. <laughs> Great way to start the video, Rich. All right, hold on. I'm going to shut this. Um, we're going to look at Michael Golden today. I was going to explain in my preamble. <laughs> I used to batch down downloader on um, <clears throat> Yandex. So I went through these and grabbed out most of what I believe to be Michael Golden, but I was looking at thumbnails. So there's a high likelihood that there's um, some pieces in here that, that maybe um, are reminiscent of Mike, but not his work. And then also there were a few pieces that I let go through that I knew weren't Michael Golden that are just very cool pieces. There's a little bit of Arthur Adams and a few other little surprises along the way. But, um, you know, we lost Jason Pearson this past week and I, out of respect to the uh, comic community, his family, and just anybody who was friends with Jason or or lo loved him or his work, um, I wanted to let it sort of settle in for people. So what we're going to do is say we're going to look at Michael Golden, and then if Kelsey's available tomorrow, I'd like to do a super fun Sunday where we enjoy Jason's art. But um, I was trying to think of a way to lead into Jason's work, and I thought the best way to do that would be to look at Michael Golden, because I know that Michael Golden was someone that Jason really enjoyed. So um, let's just settle in and get right into it. We can say hi and do all of our proper greetings as we move along. So this is an interesting comic for a few reasons. One, it's a really, really cool Michael Golden cover that it's possible that some of you have never seen i'm sure hardcore collectors have but there's another reason that this book is is interesting and the people that know are yelling at the screen right now saying say it rich tell them tell them what's inside it's mark silvestri this is a mark silvestri what if submariner had saved atlantis from its destiny it's an old early uh, comic that mike um that mark did i i when i originally got it which was many many years ago i believed it to be one of his first published works but i don't think that's accurate because um mark, mark ended up doing some um king conan and there's a there's some even more obscure stuff that mark did before that but anyway really really cool michael golden cover it's quite old um not the oldest that we'll see today but um some really classic michael golden isms in here uh, mike has a very specific way that he colors his work um it's highly graphic um tomorrow uh, kelsey can probably explain more the approach to this idea in Jason's work also, but um, there's a pretty unique way that they light things and draw things um, that, that's very, very cool and something that I enjoy a lot. So we have a lot of images. We can't dilly-dally on too many of these, so this is golden. I wasn't sure. I, I don't actually own this comic, but I would buy it just for this cover. Um, so this is, as seen on TV, King Arthur, the Knights of Justice from Marvel Comics, or as I like to call them, Marvel. <laughs> I'm kidding. I don't call him Marvel. I, I should though, just to make fun of him. No, I'm just kidding. All right. So again, golden. You know these types of shapes. I actually find very, very difficult. I shot about a 50 minute video yesterday for Patreon that I haven't uploaded yet. I need to edit it, and my um, editing software was having some trouble. But um, uh, like these cartoony blacks, like I find it very, very difficult to do this simple of shapes on my stuff. It never looks right. And it pulls my stuff in a weird direction that I just does never works for me. Um, I probably lean more into like this sort of look with things, which I used to think was so complicated, but it's the only way I can problem solve this stuff. But if I use these big juicy shapes like this, it just looks so weird to me. But man, Michael Golden can do it, and it's just so beautiful and so clear. And man, that's a gorgeous piece. And I I love his colors. They're so wild. It reminds me immediately of um, uh, Dragon's Lair, the video game. I don't know why, but um, there's like a, a little bit of like that Dragon's Lair kind of vibe to this. But this is awesome. Oh, this is a great piece. I, I like I said, I, I feel like I've seen this before, but I don't remember it that well. And man, it's cool. Oh, it's really great. Okay, so this is one of the collected Nam. Could be even a foreign edition. Yeah, it looks like it's a Spanish cover. Um, this may not be golden. I don't know. I'm I'm kind of on the fence of this is golden. So we'll move along. But anyway, there we will see some Nam work in here. All right, so we got a Micronauts cover. Enter Molecular Man. Assuming this might be the first appearance of Molecular Man. I do have this comic. Um, I probably have a couple of copies of it. Um, I don't... Some of the Micronaut issues might be valuable. I don't think that these are ridiculously expensive. I could be wrong. I've owned mine for forever. Uh, 
I'm trying to remember. You know, I, I'll honestly say that I don't think that I knew Michael Golden's work really well before I got to Wildstorm. Where I first started seeing Michael Golden's work, and we'll see this work as we move along, was Bucky O'Hare and the stuff he was doing for continuity. Uh, so, like, armor covers and things like that. This is great. I know people that collected comics longer than me have a high, high nostalgia for these Micronaut comics, but this is a little before my time. Well, this is 1980. I think a lot of these people probably got into this stuff when they were a little, a little older and went back and got them. Maybe not, though. 1980 is, like, possible. Let's see. Here's another Micronauts cover. This looks like... It's interesting. It's got, like, a little bit of a different vibe with the... Um, screen tone over these back characters it almost looks a little painted i'm assuming this is golden it looks like it to me mike uh has a tendency to hide his signature in his work there it is right here i'll kind of circle it i don't have a brush let's see right here you see the logo um kind of a fun thing in mike's work to sort of find it um you know it's like a little bit of like a, a watermark kind of stonerish. mike probably wouldn't like that reference but um i, I don't know <laughs> Anything hidden in art, to me, I equate to, like, drugs and drug art. No. <laughs> take it back, Rich! <laughs> Can't take it back. That's the problem with language. Once you say it, it's out there. Out there forever. All right, another mic uh, Micronauts cover. There's going to be duplicates in here, too, so hopefully I'm paying close enough attention um, uh, that I, I recognize them as I see them, because a lot of times uh, when I'm narrating the videos, although I am looking at the art, um, I, I can sort of, like, not remember what I've seen. Really cool piece. Like, his attention to detail is just always, like manic i was interesting because i was i was originally gonna look at some interiors of michael stuff and i opted not to because i kind of wanted stuff that he did on his own and um the stuff i was looking at was all embellished by joseph rubenstein who's a terrific inker and a really really good artist but um i wanted the like pure uncut um golden as much as possible and i'm not saying that every single piece we're going to look at of golden is 100 percent him but i wanted to lean that direction um with the the things this is really cool so this is micronauts 16 cover the micronauts the fantastic four psycho man and nuff said my favorite character from marvel uh, he should have had his own book <laughs> oh i just cracked myself up i'm so funny Someone said one time, I think it was Russ. What's up, Russ Works? Um, he said that his favorite part of my videos is me cracking myself up. It's a nervous laugh when I do it, honestly, because it's, I, I, I don't know. I'm like, I've done a lot of videos, but it's still always weird. Here's his signature is a bit more um, obvious in the piece. Whoa, sorry, I meant to zoom out. This is cool. Uh, my wife and kid are home. I'll have to tell them that I'm recording. They don't know that I'm doing the video. I tried to slip this in while they were gone, but I was on the phone with my mom. <laughs> Gotta call your mom. Talk to your mom. It's important. So. Alright, this is cool. Be it ever so deadly. Ah, oh, this is a great cover. What is this? Is 13? I definitely had this. There's no way I wouldn't. I had a book called The Comic Book Index, and I was able to um, look up back issues um, kind of early on. I think I got I got it in like the late 90s. A guy came up to my table in Artist Alley and um, showed me this book that he had created that was pretty incredible. This is kind of pre internet. Um, and yeah, you could look up any artist's name, and it had everything that they had done up to that point, and it was really cool. I'm shooting a video. I'm shooting a video. I'll be done in like 15 minutes. This is nice. He looks a little like Lobo. Lobo. I've never seen this piece. I, I This didn't ring a bell to me, but I, I saw this thumbnail several times. So I, I may have it open more than once. But um, yeah, I don't I don't think I've ever seen this this comic. It's really cool. I like it. I like that the the colors are like different too. So it's it's kind of it's pretty neat. This is 19. I'm definitely going to have to hunt this one down. 
But yeah, this is really cool. Yeah, I really like the colors. It's a nice layout, too. I mean, Mike is... I, I feel like he spends a lot of time on his layout ideas and really works it out. And probably drawing it is kind of like... It, the, the piece, in some ways, is probably kind of done at that point. It's more than like just the mechanics of doing it, which is why his execution is so good. Does this A lot of this stuff doesn't seem very spontaneous um, in terms of cover layouts. So this is a Bucky O'Hare piece. This, I, I think it's a detail of a bigger shot, but... Yeah, the Bucky O'Hare stuff is cool. Like, I collected Bucky O'Hare in um, the Echoes of Future Past from Epic. So this is cool. Is this... Oh, so this is John Byrne and Terry Austin. We're going to check it out. Um, but, like I said, I searched for Michael Golden covers, I think was the, the word, the term that I searched. So just it pulled up a bunch of stuff. I filtered out probably a thousand pieces that weren't golden for sure, but it was small. I couldn't tell. Um I, and I, I don't know John Burns stuff good enough to, to recognize this from a thumbnail. It's nice. Really, really good. Terry Austin's great. Let me peek at the inks. It's not, it's a pretty big scans, but they're not like uh, um, heritage like level. This is great. Really, really classic stuff. Man, it's good. Spider-Man is awesome. This is when Marvel was really, really kicking ass, man. Here we go. So swimsuit piece back when these things got hot. I mean, you can, you know, honestly, the thing with Michael Golden is he really influenced just about every artist at Gaijin. I, I mean, Dave Johnson, Pearson, Adam, uh, Brian Stelfries. I mean, they all have some sort of similarities to it. Probably Joe Phillips, too. Um, and then people that can't, I, I think of that as the core group. Um, and then that would be Carl Story and I think Jason Martin were the... I, I think that's the original Gaijin like lineup. I could be wrong on that. Maybe I'm forgetting someone, but yeah, it's cool. Uh, his trunks are actually pretty funny. I like the star that bleeds into the stripes. Yeah, it's cool. Here we go. This feels like it's been recolored, but I could be wrong on that. I... I I, I have a version of this. So this is 1995. This is like right when I was breaking in. I'd been broke. <laughs> His Wolverine's great. It's fun. This is all really cool. His hair. Oh. Generation Next X. Kids. Oh, right. I've seen this many times. Yeah, Golden is a... Oh, yeah, so this is Michael Golden and Terry Austin, it looks like. Pretty cool. Interesting to see them collab. And what's this? this? Looks like a detail of a piece. This is nice. Man, this is great. I always, like, when I see this type of stuff, it reminds me of um, Mike Plug. And Plug then makes me think of early Mike Mignola. Some of these shapes and the sort of roundness and the way that things are, um, like the line weight quality and all that, all sort of has a similarity to me. But there's definitely a period of um, Mignola stuff. He did a few Hulk covers, um, and they feel they feel similar to this. Barry Windsor Smith, but um, I just wanted to show it because it's cool. <laughs> I like that it felt like it was hand, like it's hand colored, so it had like almost like an original art type feel. So I just I let this one slide. Really, really neat. Man, it's great. Oh, Barry Windsor Smith is so good. It's got some crazy structure going on here with the thing. I mean, the guy's neck is very long. The head gets kind of weird and stuff like that. I mean, Barry's stuff is known is kind of known for sort of unusual um, forms and stuff like that. But he puts so much nice detail and he draws everything so well around it that it just becomes part of the style. I kind of embrace that um, thought process of like letting stuff go. Um, because it keeps some character in it. So th this looks like Golden to me. I mean, it's obviously signed by Stan Lee, but I highly doubt Stan drew this. No. 
but uh, I guess this is golden. It, it almost looked like the other version, maybe with someone that did a traceover of this piece, because this actually feels more like um, not only Golden's drawing, but the inks and stuff like that feel a little bit more like how it did in the book. The other one looked a little like um, like a recreation of this piece, which is possible. I think a friend of mine owns this original. I've I there is high likelihood that I have a black and white um, copy of this in here, but I've definitely seen this in. Um, black and white hopefully it's in there but this is a great piece there's been um several like homages to this i know um uh, arthur adams has done one travis even kind of has one that's like it's not the same shot but it's the idea of the huge sentinel with the x-men sort of victorious around it but it's really really great though art adams one though is based on a different cover now that i'm thinking of it because it's the sentinel's um, upright. I've got it in here, so you'll be able to see the Arthur Adams piece I'm talking about. But man, this is great. And this is 1981, so long time ago. Here we go. Defenders, or no, uh, what if the Avengers defeated everybody? I think this is golden. Uh, yeah, golden. It's nice. What it, What's impressive about this immediately to me is how good the paper is. I can tell just by looking at this piece that there's this paper is really high quality because there's no bleed on these lines. And on top of it, you see how evenly the black goes down? There's no like um, scratchiness inside of these lines. It, it looks like it's mostly brush inks, though, which helps, helps that process. But um, yeah, smoothboard now... In particular, if you use like a nib on it, uh, a lot of times it'll t it tears a little bit, and, and even when you're filling in blacks, uh, if you use a pen, it'll have little like little scratches and white kind of areas and stuff like that. But this is really high quality paper, the good stuff. All right, Look at this defenders. This is a fun one. I love this era of Marvel comics. It just reminds me. It's probably yeah. It's the the seventies eighties Marvel stuff. I think is really really fun. It's kind of like house style, like level of detail and stuff that most of the artists have, which isn't uncommon for any era of comics to some extent. Probably more. There's probably more variety now than ever, but there has been for a while. But um, yeah, I actually I really like this look. The 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 books back then were pretty consistent and everybody drew quite well, but this is really cool. Good stuff. All right. Oh, yeah, the Jurassic Park things. There's uh I think two print sets that they did that reproduced these um Jurassic Park covers in black and white at about 11 by 17. They're not artist edition. They are grayscale, but um, they're really, really cool. Um, my office mate, Carlos, had them, and so I made photocopies of them all because I never saw them in the store, but um, they're really, really cool. But um, he did, oh gosh, he, well, he must have done a, about 12 Jurassic Park covers then, I'm going to guess. I think each print set was about six prints, so that would add up. Um, they're all really good. Look at this. I could probably turn this one grayscale. Let me try this really quick. I mean, I know I can turn it grayscale. What I mean is I can actually remove some of this. I can tell by how the um, how it's looking that I can remove the uh, gray. Let me zoom in so I don't grab a pixel that's too dark. There we go. That'll be close. I don't. I don't have to get ridiculous with it, but. You could see like how kick-ass these look like in grayscale. Man, isn't that cool? <laughs> and and you know, Golden, his stuff gets very busy and it can sometimes kind of turn into wallpaper where it gets a little difficult to sort of like it feels encrypted. But that is kind of part of the fun of his work. But I will say this, overall, he actually handles it quite well. And and most of the time the stuff is very, very clear. So um, you know, he he definitely uh I'm just gonna I'm like, the OCD setting and I want to make it like uh <laughs> but I I mean I think overall this reads actually pretty clear you know you can see the dinosaur you can see the guys with their cameras and this is a little pixelated but um it all works pretty good but this is intense you know you look at uh 5 10 15 20 pages of stuff like this you're going to start to burn your reader out a little bit which is why it works well for a cover um you know but interior is this detailed it might be a little too much this is one of the more like i don't know simple will be the right word i don't know if this one's going to turn uh, if i can 
get this one a little more simple. I see. Yeah, it didn't. It wasn't too bad. Just gotta darken this a little. But it's a fun piece. It's funny how he did the um, the like, the claw that kills you is like this black it makes it pop out quite a bit in the um, black and white. But man, the lighting is great on this. He's so good. This eye almost looks statted. It's weird. It really stands out. Like I don't know if uh, oh all they all, all of them do. What they do? Oh, I guess it's just the way it was colored. I guess it was the way it was colored. So this was interesting. I uh, hmm. I'm not convinced that this is Michael Golden. It looks a little rougher than his stuff. It's pretty cool though, honestly. Like I, I, I mean, I kind of like it. But yeah, I don't, I don't know if this is Michael Golden. Um, but yeah, I think it's cool. This is. I have this comic for sure. I really like this stuff, and it's funny is Brian Boland did some really great um, 2000 AD covers that have stuff like this. Like the like a there's a big Venus flytrap on one. I mean, obviously these are like ants of some sort. They're really cool looking. Damn. But yeah, I don't get the impression for covers like this that this is like him just sitting down and kind of like laying it out and then drawing drawing it like on one board. I don't know how Golden works. I I do actually have a VHS tape of him like a how-to thing, but it's more like business advice, I think, than drawing advice from what I remember. Um, but uh, my guess would be is that he kind of lays this out, massages the placement of all the different objects and stuff that he's going to use, probably refines that a bit, and then light boxes it and inks it. I could be wrong, but it, 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 kind of based on what I'm seeing, I, I would speculate that that could be the case. You could do it on one board, but I think it would be easier to not when we saw this one. Okay. Oh, yeah, we did see this one. Uh, we saw this. And I think we saw this. Yeah, we did. Oh, great. My phone is holding up the mic, so I can't. <laughs> I was going to move it. See, did we see this one? If I don't reply to the text, I shouldn't get too many. <laughs> Hold on. I'll move my phone so that... Uh, the sound might change for a second, but let me, uh, I don't want the, like, every time the phone beeps, it, it, it'll do it. Oh, we did see this one. Okay. This was interesting. Is this golden? Kind of, no. I don't think this is golden. Nah. This looks like, uh, I don't know, different. Featuring Playboy Playmate, Rebecca Ferrati. <laughs> All right, Rom Space Knight. Uh... I know, I know, yeah, this is Mal Milgram. Okay, so this isn't a golden cover. All right. And this is definitely not a golden cover. All right, so Nam. There are, if I'm not mistaken, I think that IDW has done some Nam uh, artist editions. I really actually do, I should pick those up at some point. I, I can't afford it right now, but um, uh, man, this is some of the best shit. Oh, they're so good. I lean towards the NAM over, uh, I was at the G.I. Joe annual. The G.I. Joe annual is phenomenal, but I, I, I like the NAM book has got like a soft spot in my heart. Just because it's like, man, it's really cool. Both are great, though. God, it's so good. But you could see how Jason Pearson would be into this. I mean, there's like, like, it's just, there's little things in here that really do feel like Jason's work. Like some of this feels like Jason and and this stuff right like in here. I don't know why I'm getting like a Pearson vibe right here. I think some of it's the sharp angles. This is that one piece, the whole thing. It's cute. Yeah, seventy nine. This is the kind of the um stoner art, the end of the stoner art era. This is cool can see though this is interesting that kelsey likes this uh, like the cutouts and stuff like that where whatever was originally drawn here was replaced by this so i don't know if michael didn't like what he had drawn or if the editor was like uh, that's not really what i was thinking or it could have been the background was switched out one or the other but um something was off these characters are you know they're kind of funny drawn to be honest i mean this guy's arms are 
kind of short or his I don't know like his neck is small I mean it's like they're a little a little awkward but um it doesn't really matter it's still a fun piece it's the the impact of the image I think works so that's you know again kind of what well it's in, I've matured a lot as an artist over the last like probably six or seven months and one of the hurdles that I got over was being able to let stuff go I, I, I mentioned it a few minutes ago but I mean, it's it's like so many artists that I like in my favorite pieces that they've done have little weird spots. And when it's you and you have a weird spot on your piece, it seems like a catastrophe. <laughs> and in the past, that would hold me back. Now I just go like, all right, you did good on some other stuff. Like, just calm down and like. Give it a few minutes, give it a few hours, keep working on the piece, get more done, and then see if this thing still bothers you to the same extent that it is right now. So when, you know, with like Golden too, I mean, these pieces take a long time. I can't imagine that most of these he gets through in less than 20 hours. So, um, and this is the Arthur Adams piece. Uh, this is, I'm nearly sure a friend of mine owns this, um, but man, this is great. But it's good, you know, got some Michael Golden sort of vibes in it, but boy, that's cool. Something like this would take a long time. I bet these probably take um, 40 to 60 hours. Because this is a lot of rendering. But, you know, when Arthur does a piece like this, he knows it's going to sell for a ton of money. So, you know, in some ways you are kind of getting paid by the line. <laughs> if you can draw well and you can put this much detail on a piece, your art will sell for a lot of money. I and mean, it's just... It's what collectors respond to is that amount of effort. Oh, you know what it is? So this is actually, though, very golden-oriented because this is golden. It's just this part is, I think, from a different golden piece. But, yeah, because it even says after Michael Golden. Yeah. Art did a lot of tribute pieces. Like, he for, for a while, he was doing them all the time. This is great. I like this. I think this is fun. His Hulk is, like... <laughs> pretty funny but it's awesome so this is 1980 heading into the 80s let's go folks yeah i could never put black on a costume like this and have it work it would look so weird it would look weird to me like j scott campbell kind of like like he doesn't draw like um golden but he the same idea where he uses shapes to basically carve out like as in like the the shine on his spandex and stuff like that um you know they're they're almost like stylistic um interpretations of each area brett booth does it it's a classic comic approach to to that this is very very nice i've seen this before that's really really cool <laughs> it looks so funny his face is hysterical oh my gosh yeah, there was there was definitely a point where Mike stuff um, his faces <coughs> became very um, like uh, what you call it like um, like the everything is big on the face is the best way I can explain it. It almost makes them feel like their their bodies are small because it's I don't think it's actually the head size is big, but all the features on the faces are like kind of like a slightly big, like the eyes are big um, and it 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 gives them a different quality that's very quickly identifiable as a Michael Golden piece, but this is great. Some crazy shit. I don't even know what is going on with all these fish. I wasn't sure if this is... No, okay. This one came up a few times. I, I deleted a few versions of it, but uh, I wasn't sure small. So I mean, I was looking... The thumbnails were like, like this size, and I was trying to go, uh, it could be Golden. All right, G.I. Joe yearbook. This is a classic. And IDW did a portfolio set of these. So it's um, 11 by 17 or slightly bigger. I mean, it's 12, 12 by 18. Um, and it's all the plates of it. And it is phenomenal. I picked that up a couple of years ago. I think based on um, someone. It might have been Dan Frega or cartoonist KFAB. Somebody, I think, had it online or mentioned it and... I wasn't aware that it existed, and so I, I got it like literally right after the show. But it's, it's so good. But let's take a look at this beautiful guns. Really, really nice. 
All right, question. This is Dennis Cohen and Bill Sienkiewicz. So I thought that this could be golden. Feels like it. But maybe not. Okay, so I think these are golden. Just, uh... Not... It, it's weird. Not all artists go through this phase, but most do at some point where it's like... They've been in the business long enough where uh, sometimes they'll take a job or they'll have a body of work for like a year or two that seems a little less inspired than maybe some of the stuff that they've done in the past. And then then they some a lot of them will pick up pick up where they left off and come back with a ferocity after a little sort of um, down tick. But um, you know, you just never know. If it's the beginning of sort of like a change in the work or if it's just that, you know, like whatever, maybe you're just not as into the characters that you're drawing or the editor is a pain in the ass. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that can go on when you're doing gigs that uh, a normal fan wouldn't be aware of, you know, it's like. And and you honestly, this looks like maybe Tony Harris, Tony Harris. Um, uh, uh, you know what? I actually, because I was shedding it, I saw something that led me to believe that wasn't Tony Harris. Um, uh, but uh, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that can go on behind the scenes. Oh, this is the dancing um, thing. Um, you know, an editor could be picking covers that you're not even a fan of. Like if 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 you're working for a company like Marvel or DC and you have to submit cover examples, like they go like send me five versions of like your idea for this cover idea. Um, you know the joke is is that that the nine times out of ten they'll pick your least favorite and it really is true i don't know why that is but it it, it seems to go that way sometimes it's funny how the artists and editors have very different idea of what uh, would make a good cover but um it could even be something like that but this is a great great cover it's very very cool and then again this is pretty iconic is um glenn bit this and changed it a little bit but it ended up being um his uh, solo album kind of logo or the logo that he used for his own name. Whoops. <laughs> Here we go. This is nice. Some wacky characters though. Goodness. What is going on folks? All right. Dr. Strange. This is a classic, classic comic. This looks like a reprint of it. It, if you, I think it's Doctor Strange fifty five is the issue number. If if you don't have it and you're digging on this Michael Golden stuff, I mean it's definitely one of the very famous books that he did. He did the cover. The cover will probably be in here, um, somewhere. But uh, definitely get it on newsprint because the the you want the original printing of it. The reprints, the colors are too bright and stuff like that. And the original version is a little tiny bit dark the way that it printed. But oh man, it looks so much better. Something about the newsprint and just how it sits on it is beautiful. So this is not um, golden. There we go. This is nice. He 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 really like this this like shadow the the lighting that he uses is so dramatic on stuff and he really frames stuff with these just intensely lit um, gutters of detail and story. That's really cool. And that's that piece again. Right. This is nice. I like this quite a bit. Uh, let's see this. I, I believe this is golden. It may not be, but um, if not, it's someone kind of trying to do a little bit of a golden type style. It kind of feels, this feels like golden to me. Uh, we'll leave a little bit of the line work in because it's, um, some of it has been knocked out for color, so. Just kind of do this, but I mean, you could definitely see where, like, someone like Brian Stelfreeze. Um, oh, Cully Hamner was the other Gaijin artist. I apologize. I was gonna just say Cull Cully Hamner early on had a look like this too. Yeah, Cully. Cully is really good. Okay, let's go. Now I feel bad it's for twenty-five minutes. He was neglected. <laughs> it's a Gaijin 
founding member. Shame on me. I'm probably forgetting one other person, too. Maybe Tony Harris was in the original group. I don't remember. Okay. That is. that is. This is a great piece. I have this comic. Oh, look at this. I don't remember this one. Looks like it's in a swimming pool. <laughs> Except for the lily pads. It's like, I'm going to chomp your balls. Ooh, look at this. I actually really like this cover, too, on the printed version of the comic. But this is cool. Batman. I, You know, when it didn't pull up all my other... my I have two other... Two or three other Batman covers from... I think these are detective covers um, that are, like, my favorites. This is a nice one, but it's not my favorite of the ones that he did. But, yeah, I didn't see those um, in the polls that I got. So, it's not a big deal. I've had it in other videos, but... Um, oh, man, this is great. I don't feel like I've seen this before. Dude. Oh, and I, obviously Michael Golden was a big influence on Arthur Adams, too. Fuck, this is great. Wow. Man, what a great piece. Oh, you know who was would would try to get me into Michael Golan? A lot of you won't know the artist's name, but J.J. Kirby, Javon Kirby, um, worked at Wildstorm. He was a big Golden fan. I remember him having me check out the, the Nam, and I was like, eh, it's all right. It was he was showing me some of the more cartoony books, uh, to, like l later in the run where the stuff got more simple. I'm like it's good, but I don't see what you're raving about. And then I saw stuff like this, and I went, ah, now I get it. Man, these guns are killer. This is actually a really good video for me to see, because it's it's de it's detailed, but clear detail. Like, this is this is really good. I actually should seek this out, because this is a nice piece. Um, could be very helpful. Is this from G.I. Joe? I don't know. It says something guard. I don't, I don't know what this is from. Let me know if you know what this piece is from, because I'd like to try to get um, the comic of it. It's like this. This is a good one for me to look at. This is like later stuff. I mean, it's this was done a while ago now, probably like six or seven years ago. Um, but it feels like the, the newer stuff. Um, but it's nice. Yeah, I remember when he did this. It was a while ago. I, I, I like the colors like quite a bit. Good color choices. This is not the Doctor Strange issue that I was referring to before, but this is just still a pretty cool cover. Like I said, I'm pretty sure the book that is is that I'm thinking of is Doctor Strange 55, not What If. strange i don't know if he did the interiors of 43 i can't remember off the top of my head but um it's possible i kind of don't think so but i could be wrong this is funny this is similar to one of the early pieces that we looked at that i was saying that i like so much it's this head and the triangle shape is really similar it's funny i love the lighting that he gets on all this stuff i i've been I've been getting more brave with like lighting and stuff like that and and this is actually very cool to see such um high contrast like lighting based on the famous photo oh this is andy cooper okay it's simon golden here's a black and white of this nice nice terry austin inks on this book pretty cool pretty cool all right Let's continue. A little whiteout right there. That's another thing Kelsey likes to see. A little whiteout right there, I can see. Looks like maybe some was put there. That means it's real art. <laughs> okay, this is not golden. Carl Potts and who? I'm just kind of curious now. Cannot read that. Dupper Dang? No, I don't think that. Oh, it's funny. I don't know how I let these get through. I... Oh, inside special color print by Golden. So, if you ever find this magazine, there you go. Michonne. Is this Golden? It looks like Golden, but... Obviously not as detailed as the stuff that we've been seeing. It's nice. The Michonne looks good. More Micronauts. 
Uh, I don't think this is golden. Pretty cool piece. I like it. That's a nice cover. This looks like some cabbage. Oh, maybe it's chicken. No, the cover looks like some cabbage to me. I don't know. What is this? I don't know whose signature that is. Is this? Yeah, I'm not sure. Like, uh. Sienkiewicz's signature is usually like more narrow, so I don't know. Maybe it's Howard Chaikin. Is the, this face kind of looks like Chaikin? He's putting a little bit of the um, Sienkiewicz uh, Tijuana twinkle, as Scott Williams calls it on it. And, oh, by the way, Scott Williams just had a birthday, so happy William, happy birthday to Mr. Scott Williams. It was like a day or two ago. It's the man with the plan. Oh, this is so good. This was one of my favorite from that print set. Man, this is just, like, so cool. That's time-consuming, man. You're spending at least five or six hours doing something like this. Oof. This, too. Goodness. I mean, I guess you could draw it in white. I don't, It doesn't look like he does. It looks like he outlines stuff. He may go in and put a little bit of white paint on him, but, um... Uh, Overall, to me, it looks. Oh gosh, it looks like it looks like most of it is, um, like he outlines stuff and then fills in the blacks. Man, that is sick. This is a fun piece. Oh, uh, we saw this one before. Yeah, it's just a different. The colors are like a little more like faded on this one. Oh, look at this. I love Ghost Rider. Oh, man, this cover is great. How fun. Oh, man, I love this. Oh, that is so cool. That's what I'm saying. There's something about this era of Marvel Comics that's really, really neat. And the, the Silver Age stuff is great, too. But, man, I the 80s stuff is just so cool. Late 70s, early 80s. It's a lot of fun. Or just 70s in general. I mean, some people would argue that probably the 60s stuff is better, but this, this is pretty cool. Okay, we saw that. Uh huh. I remember this. We may have seen it. Some crazy looking monsters. Yeah, it's really. The lighting that he uses is really interesting. Okay. And we just saw that. Spider Man showing us his crotch. What's up, Spidey? What are you doing? What are you doing? Looks like a close-up, but it may not be. It could be a cover of, like, a... It almost feels like um, the inside of a book, you know? Like, the um, when you open a book, the inside cover. Like, it could be... like I, It probably isn't that, but I'm just saying it reminds me of, like, it would be something like that. Uh, this is his famous Marvel poster, recolored by someone. I'm, the colors are okay on this. I don't really like the background, actually, at all. Um, but, uh, the yeah, this is a pretty famous poster. I don't think in this video I have a black and white of it. There may be. But definitely, if you search my channel, I have other Michael Golden videos. I've definitely shown this in black and white. Oh, yeah, I remember these. This is, it's a Nightwing cover, but I was working at Wildstorm when he was doing these. All right, I wasn't a huge fan of the colors on these. I mean, I, I hate to be a critic, but I, I don't know why. Like, it, it felt felt like maybe. Uh, I think what it is is there's a mood to the lighting of the background characters, and then this is all very like um, it, it, it doesn't look like it's in the same world, which could be intentional, but. Um, I almost wish that it had maybe like a little bit more mood lighting on these characters or something more extreme actually um, would even look better. Like the real, like not realism, but like the more realistic color choices on these don't jibe with the background to me. This is a little more better. And this actually does remind me of kind of like a Jason Pearson piece too. I've talked about this piece before in other videos. I remember going over it. So I was saying that the, these buildings in the background are out of perspective. <laughs> it's 
like, um, why is this building this direction and this one going this direction? And then everything's a three point perspective. We need to talk about this. He probably could justify it though. He'd be like, listen, stupid. I'll tell you why. So who knows? Who am I to argue? All right. So this another Spider-Man presenting his crotchular area. I see a theme. <laughs> Spidey, you're not acting like a lady. Come on. <laughs> oh, that's really good. And we've had this conversation before about the webbing. The who created the spaghetti webbing. <laughs> there are some that believe it was golden. Not in this particular piece, but um, it can be traced to that. And then others will say that it's... Um, I, I can't remember who it was, but I saw it. It was like, was it a John Romita senior video? I did like a, I did a video one time and I wasn't expecting to notice it. And it was silver age artist and there was some spaghetti webbing in it. And I was like, wait a minute, let's stop the presses right here. It was, it wasn't a lot of it, but it was it for sure. So let's all fight about spaghetti webbing in the comments section today. Ah, this is such a great cover. Man, that's good. So this is from the Nam magazine. Nam magazine reprinted the Nam in black and white. So if you can't afford an artist edition, but have like magazine back issues of magazines at your local comic book shop, uh, you can get these, and um, they're pretty pretty nice. Honestly, I I don't own many of them, but uh, they're not bad. Right, so this. This is we've seen this one a few times. I've I, there's a few of these covers that actually are going to be in here a few times. This is Golden. Uh, no, this is George Perez and Ernie Chan. I guess I don't know. I'm guessing GP and EC. This looks like Golden. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's nice. Oh man, it's so awesome. Man, that is really cool. You can really get that Jack Kirby, like, turned up to, like, 11 on this one. Man, that is crazy cool. Hmm. I like that. Oh, man. It's so clear, too. He really laid this out well. Because this could just be a mess. Although, I will say, I didn't notice the back legs. I thought it was, uh... I thought these were his legs, which they are, but I'm saying like, um, yeah, I didn't realize he was like a, what do they call it, a bipedal? Is that what horses are? Will it rotate? Oh, will rotate. Wow. It's a rare treat. So my Photoshop won't do that. Ah, oh, this is so good. Okay. Oh man, that's a great cover. Wow. Damn. Some of his Jurassic Park covers have a vibe similar to this, but this is just beautiful. Man, that is powerful. It really creates a sense of isolation with the amount of space around them. Like, there's just nobody there to help them. Uh, it's really good. And the guy's, like, dying. Or uh, maybe he's going to fall. Fall would equal death. <laughs> Some Bucky O'Hare. Right. A little more Bucky O'Hare. Ah, Doctor Strange cover. These were from the 90s, I think, or early 2000s. Really, really cool. But again, I forget the like, little Jason Pearson vibe on some of this. Adam Hughes, some of his cities things sort of vibe like this. Some black and white for y'all to peep. Look at that. Beautiful, right? Love the curve on that. Oh man, it's so nice. So okay, we'll do like five more and then I'm gonna wrap it up. I've gotta get to work and I've got a friend coming into town today that I'm gonna meet. I was gonna say, is this Battlestar Galactica? Man, this is awesome. Or not a great scan, but man, that is really cool. Little steampunky Batman. I like it. Uh, is this Goldman? I'm not positive that this is Michael Goldman. It's a nice piece, though. I actually like this. I think this is very nice. Hmm. 
Yeah, I like that. Here we go. So this is two different artists, but one of these I think is Michael Golden. Or is it? This is Mignola, but it was credited to both. Uh, I don't know which piece is Golden. There was two credits. Like the name of the file was Michael Golden. Oh, here we go. There's the MG there. So maybe it's Mignola Pencils, Michael Golden Inks. Although it says Mike X, X, Esposito. Not sure. We'll let this one go. See what's... So... This is definitely golden art. The colors don't feel like golden, but they could be. But it's a nice piece. Um, you know, the, it's not a great scan, and the colors are like not my thing. But um, this is someone else for sure. But you've got Abe Lincoln in a photo of a gun or a painting of a gun. I don't know. Arthur Adams said that this is nice. It might, this might be an after Michael Golden type thing, although it's not listed as one, but um, I think this is similar to like something that Michael Golden had done. These were for... Uh, well, I, I would keep wanting to say they're for Wildstorm, because, like, again, it was when DC had first bought Wildstorm, so we would get these in our comps, but um, uh, they're uh, DC, but Mike had done... Um, I think it was Authority. He did, he did a few Authority covers for us and then went into these. So it was like kind of it felt like one body of work to me. There's another ROM cover. I think we looked at this one already. Or I've seen this cover a million times. So I'm not a very good skin at all. Oh, this is awesome. Wow, man, this is so kick ass. I don't know if this is a spread. This may be like half of a spread, but whatever it is, this is great. Oh my gosh. That is incredible. What a fantastic piece. Man, this is really inspiring stuff. It, it's so rare that people are this creative with their layouts, even to this day with, with a, an awareness of Michael Golden. You don't see a lot of people attempting really like stuff this dynamic. I mean, he's got like this just crazy, almost like fisheye sort of perspective going on and the poses of the characters and the gear. It's really, really nice. really really great oh yeah look at this it's funny because i'm so used to seeing the cover that you almost forget that it's this beautiful wraparound piece that just like man the back is incredible in fact i'm nearly sure i think idw has got at least two new artist editions coming out next year one is kevin nolan and i think the other is a michael golden book i, I might be wrong on that but i kind of think it was michael golden I might be connecting the wrong dots. Maybe it's someone else. But there's two there's two artist editions coming out um, next year from IDW. This year, sorry. We're in 2023. It's rolling. Uh, not sure if this is golden or not. It doesn't look like his drawings. Miss Mystic. So these were back issues that I bought when I first started collecting. But um, uh, Neil Adams' company, Continuity, had was using Michael Golden for not only covers, but he, they were reprinting or printing the Bucky O'Hare stuff. Here's this piece in color. And we got this. It's pretty cool. That's nice. Really, really good. I mean, just a very creative shot, you know. Again, not... not this is... Golden goes beyond the imagination of so many artists with his concepts. Oh, look at the Chaka. Chaka is down there. Danger Chaka. There's a Nam magazine cover. They must be like napalming someone, burning a village. Pretty crazy. Some heavy shit. All right. Ba-ba. Hercules. Uh, that doesn't look like gold. Very, very pixelated version of the name of card. No, no pixelated. Is this gold? No. I don't think so. I can't read the thing. Oh, this is Paul Smith. It looked like it's a PMS. Well, that's weird. Okay. All right, two more, and then we're done. 
Uh, I don't know if that's gold then. I don't think so. Well, maybe. A little hard to say. Pixel, pixely again. This is a Nam cover that I'm not as familiar with. I've seen it, but uh, I don't own this comic, I don't think. But it's nice. Really, really cool. Great shot. I love how he turned the angle of the camera. Or like it's, I think they call this a Dutch angle. Not golden, but kind of fun piece, honestly. I sort of like this. <laughs> so this is a square. It looks like it says. It's really cool. Stainless steel rot rat 2000 AD and tornado. This is fun. This looks like a little I don't know, like Barry Windsor Smith inspired or something. I don't think this is gold either. This was I, I knew the other one wasn't. This one I thought maybe could have been from small. Like again, I was looking at it like this. We say this. We've seen this. There's Michael Golden, you handsome devil. Talented, talented man. I've heard he's a tough cookie. But I don't know that to be fact. Sometimes he's bearded. Sometimes he's not bearded. He's sitting next to Mark Texaria, though. Oh, that is really cool. Man, that's great. I like how he, um, in the, the Nam piece, he had helicopters kind of in a similar thing where there was like three helicopters in the background that were um, almost like a, like a graphic design element in the piece, although they, they, they're, in this, they're interacting with the piece more because they're banking. You can see like how these are turning. It's really good, man. <laughs> really good. Ah, this is so good, guys. This is great. This was the cover that uh, we saw in black and white. But I, I like it like this. I like the colors. I, th I think the green with the um, that red and then the even the like cream and blue. It all it all works quite well. It's a really nice cover. We saw that. It's another Jurassic Park one. Okay. This. I thought this was cool. We'll do one more after this. <laughs> this is nice. We'll do one more. This is okay. It's it's good. I, I think the colors aren't doing any favors. This is a classic. We saw this already, though. So that doesn't count. This doesn't count because it's already... I think we saw this one? Maybe not. Is this golden? No, oh, this is someone else. This is a trippy piece. Uh, hard to tell. That does look like golden. Not a fan of blurs. Here we go. We'll end on this. This is good. And this actually is perfect because this has a little bit of a Jason Pearson vibe. All right. So tomorrow for Super Fun Sunday, my hope and goal is that I can wrangle Kelsey into doing a Jason Pearson video. And we'll celebrate Jason's life and art and have some fun and enjoy it. And this is really, really a great piece to end on. Man, this is a grand slam and perfect segue into Jason's work. So, all right, you guys have a great day. Take it easy. Hopefully, if you're uh, an artist, you're drawing and getting inspired to, to do stuff, you know, to draw things like this, like I said, I, I personally believe that there's a lot of planning that goes into these pieces. He has a very good handle on perspective. He has a tremendous amount of patience. He has a very large library of, um, uh, what would you call it? Like, um, his attention to detail in the pieces is very impressive. <clears throat> Some of it's probably from memory quite a bit of it and then whatever isn't he does the due diligence and searches out uh what he needs to get to it but like the perspective on this piece is insane i mean it, it this is crazy we're like underneath this and starting to see the stuff coming back around on top of us meaning that we're seeing like like the this plane 
and then he warps it all the way like this, but this is even curving. I mean, it's really, really tremendous. But something like this is going to take a long time. It's going to take a long time to plan. You know, this could have taken two days to lay out. But I, I do personally believe, and it's kind of how I work, is by the time I'm done laying out a piece, it's kind of penciled in a way. But you have to repencil it then, you know, but but you've you've kind of you've done all that work. And I don't consider I'm nowhere near what Michael Golden does, to be clear. I'm not saying that I'm just saying that, like, uh, I, I don't think you can just lay this out on one sheet of paper and do it. I mean, you could. Some people could. But I, I don't get the impression that that's the way that Mike would would approach these. It seems more thoughtful and um, planned. Man, it's good. really insane. What a piece to end on. I can't get over how good this is. God dang. You know what's crazy too is I've honestly never seen this cover before. So this is a, a Batman cover for 485. I, I've never seen this. If I saw it in color, maybe it would ring a bell, but I don't I don't recall ever, ever seeing this piece before, so it's new to me. But alright, you guys have a great day. I'll talk to you later. I'm digging this white um, fire escape under here. It's really cool. Nice touch. Look how complicated it gets in here. He's crazy. <laughs> he really is nuts. Alright, that was insane. Alright, talk to you guys later. Have a good one. Bye.